What is up everybody? It is the Whizzler, and today I'm coming to you with my final piece on the 101 series for Havoc. And we're going to do something a little different and talk about how to fight Havoc. So, in the first example I'm going to share with you, we're going to take a look at um, a couple of different things that Havoc brings to the table. And I wanted to share some champs that you guys might have on your rosters. You may not have even ranked them up. Some of you may have. Maybe they're rank 2, maybe they're rank 3, maybe they're maxed out 4 stars. Doesn't matter. A lot of champions can counter Havoc if you know how to fight him. So here I brought Taskmaster. And Taskmaster has a couple of things going for him in this fight. The first thing that I want to mention is he can never get detonated by Havoc's plasma... Uh, debuff. The plasma buildup debuff, after it reaches 11, it will detonate. Well, Taskmaster has a piece in his kit that he goes debuff immune after 10 debuffs are applied to him. So he has a safety mechanism that is very similar to that of an armor up. However, it is not exactly the same, so it doesn't prevent them from building up. It will, however, give you some willpower healing if you do have that mastery. And you may have noticed that I use a lot of heavy attacks with Taskmaster. Now, I'm not going to go into how to use Taskmaster in this example, but I do want to uh, pause for a minute and share how the heck did that work. So let's watch it again. We're going to take a look here how I begin the fight against Havoc. Hold up. First you want to do with any champion for Havoc is try to bait out his heavy attacks. Now, his heavy attacks can be dangerous if they land, so you got to know how to do it, but know that you can interrupt them. So this becomes dangerous if he's on an uh, unstoppable node in Alliance War where heavy attacks cannot be interrupted. Aside from that, you can bait them all day long, and they're pretty easy to bait. Just hold your block, and what you want to do is continue to bait heavy attacks until he gets close to an SP2. His SP1 is dangerous. It's very dangerous in a sense that it will allow him to build up his plasma um, passives as well as any plasma buildup debuffs on you much faster for a temporary period of time. But if you can get him to an SP2, what's going to happen is you bait the SP2. Now, even if it's unblockable, it doesn't matter. It's very easy to evade. As you can see, um, I'll be doing, I think, one or two evades in this fight. His SP2 is much like Iron Man's or Iceman's. You literally one dash and you can be anywhere on the screen to avoid it. But it also will remove every single plasma passive that Havoc has on him. And that's huge. You want to remove them. You want them gone. Because that's what gives him his power. What you don't want is for him to use his SP1 continuously because it just builds them that much faster. You also don't want him to build up to an SP3. Now, it's dangerous because Havoc can build power on his own without you hitting him and without him hitting you. So you want to start baiting that SP2 as soon as he crosses the line. So as soon as the SP2 bar is full, back off your block and start baiting that SP2. Taunt um, champs are helpful, but not required. So Stark Spidey is good in that fight, but not required. I highly recommend using somebody who has some form of defensive mechanism that may help you against Havoc, but it doesn't have to be the be-all, end-all, grandiose Havoc solution counter, like, um, you know, OG Vision or somebody with an armor up constantly, like the new champ Warlock. Those, those are going to be good safety nets, but they're not required, and a lot of people don't have them, to beat Havoc. So let's uh, continue on with the fight. Now what you're going to see here is I continue to bait his heavy attack and build him up to an SP2, but you may notice that I'm intercepting his heavy with another heavy, and that's part of Taskmaster's abilities. I'm doing that because what I want to happen is I want his exploit weakness to be a heavy attack. So then I'm using a heavy attack, and what it's going to do is start applying concussions on Havoc, which further enhances my abilities to slow him down. The more concussions I can add on him, the more ability accuracy reduction he receives. So his plasmas may not build, uh, things may start to not work correctly for him, and if I can get to 5, which I don't believe I do in this particular example, I get what uh, 
think Brian Grant called it a super concussion way back when, when he did his review. And actually, I did get hurt in this fight. Now, the, that counts as five concussions or five debuffs for Taskmaster's abilities. So if I launch an SP3 here, it's, it's going to benefit me in a huge way. Now, Havoc has just under half of his health left. But an SP3 gives a guaranteed exploit weakness, no matter what is set. As long as a target is set, it will it will hit it, and it just ripped him apart. So, great counter. Now, I want to take a look at another champ that many people have, and a lot of people have this guy ranked up to rank 5 for former Alliance War defensive purposes, so he's a good counter. Now, Dormammu... Is got he's got a couple of things going for him in the Havoc fight. Now you can see you still want to bait the heavy attack, but I'm using medium medium combos. And the reason I'm doing that with Dormammu is because it power drains Havoc. Now it's a very similar approach. I do not want Havoc to build plasma. Well, you may be asking, well, why am I using a champion that has energy damage only? There's no physical contact that just gives Havoc more plasmas. It does. However, if I'm only doing medium mediums, what's going to happen is as soon as the second medium lands, it drains every single plasma that I gave him. So he may get up and close to 10. He may even break 10 and give me a debuff every so often. But it's not going to happen fast enough unless I make a mistake. So I'm pretty comfortable using Dormammu for this fight. I actually prefer him because he's got more of an advantage than somebody like Taskmaster because I can constantly power drain him with two mediums sequentially. And if I want to play it a little safer, I can use an SP-1. I can power lock him if I want to take a little bit of a risk. His plasmas will build up twice as fast, but if I'm using medium medium, it will continue to drain. Um, you also have some direct damage at your disposal with his heavy attack. And Dormammu's heavy attack is a little confusing if you've never used him before, but what you want to do is get one heavy off, and then you're going to, if I'm not mistaken, play do four medium-medium combos. And what that's going to do is fill up the passive that you placed on the opponent. It's almost like a grenade that you have to build the ammunition within, if you will. And once that is up to 100, which is the maximum that it can get to, and it's considered um, at its max potential, another heavy attack will detonate that and give direct damage based on the, the number that, it, that it's in. Now, this isn't going to be a Dormammu tutorial, so I'm not going to go in too deep, but that direct damage, um, it basically circumvents any armor, any, any kind of node capabilities. It's direct damage. There's no way around it. It's going to just hit him for whatever rank and level set that your Dormammu is. Um, very, very handy champ. A lot of people have him ranked up, like I said. I use him all the time. I bring him to Alliance War even, even still to counter Havoc on some nodes. Um, he's great for um, Psychic Thorns as well. I use him there. And I see Havoc on that path a lot. I don't have a Namor ranked up at the moment. Um, I actually just pulled him yesterday, so I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited to rank him up, but uh, he's not there yet, so currently I'm using alternative options for the Psychic Nords, Thorns path when I take it. Anyway, that is it for today's tutorial on how to fight Havoc. So just to recap what we got going on and what you have to keep in mind when fighting against Havoc, you want to avoid him building up to the maximum plasma passives in any way, shape, or form, and the best way to do that is to power drain him. Hands down, it is the best counter to any Havoc. That's not always going to be possible, but Power Drain absolutely supersedes any Armor Up champion at your disposal. If you can Power Drain him, it's a better solution than an Armor Up champ. I promise you that. You want to Power Drain him. Now, you don't want to Power Drain him off of your SP3 because it's not easily at your disposal. You want to Power Drain him easily. So, Hawkeye, great, great champ counter because you can do it on an SP1. Um, it bleeds him, so it's going to give him a little bit of plasma, so you have to manage that. Um, I still think Dormammu is a great roster that uh, champ that people don't look at for uh, Havoc. But again, Taskmaster is another one that a lot of people may not use or may not consider. Some people don't even want to rank him up because when he was launched, he was very confusing. It was one of the most complex um, champion description sheets that we've seen ever at the time. But he's very powerful, and he can reduce ability accuracy 
pretty dramatically. He's a very, very good champ to have. Uh, mine's currently ranked 3, and I don't use him a whole lot, but I wanted to showcase what he can do. I have very seriously considered taking him up, but um, you know, with the resources and the scarcity of them in this game, I've not quite done that. A um, couple of other things to think about when fighting Havoc. Baiting heavies is the key. You can pretty much fight Havoc with any champ if you can bait the heavies, because Every time you bait a heavy, if he has two or more plasma passives on him, it takes those two away and turns them into a prowess passive. So that makes his special attacks a little bit more powerful. And if he gets to five of those, they makes them unblockable. So you have to watch that. That's why you want to push him to an SP2, much easier to evade. And that SP2, if he uses that, also removes all of his plasma passives that he has built up. Now I know this was a lot. Rewind it, watch it again if you need to. But Havoc has... A great Alliance War Defender, and I know a lot of people have a lot of trouble fighting him, so I wanted this to be a little different for the 101 series for Havoc, and hope this helps people kind of overcome a pretty challenging defender. Um, he's also in a lot of the different story mode and uh, variant uh, quests, and you gotta know how to handle him. You can handle him with almost everybody that you have at your disposal. And you may be overlooking some really good counters that you already have ranked up. So take a look at your roster. Um, see what you got. And uh, good luck. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really uh, hope that this helped you out in some way, shape, or form. Um, please hit that like button below. Subscribe if you want to hear more. I look to uh, have at least one video a week now that Comic-Con is over. And I can put a little bit more attention out to it. And... Um, try and keep these to a three-part series per champ and um, get excited to announce the next one so stay tuned thanks again